Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our midweek act of worship for this uh, 17th uh, day in May. And if my family's watching along, uh, a big happy birthday to my brother who turns 60 today. Um, so happy birthday, Andrew. And for everyone else, we welcome you to this uh, act of worship as we create a little oasis in the middle of the week to come and think about God's word, to bring our prayers and to sing his praise. Amen. We begin by lighting our three candles, reminding us of God's Amen. presence in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. We light a light in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life into us. We will light a light in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hand in love to us. And we will light a light in the name of the Spirit, who encompasses the world and blesses our souls with yearning. We will light three lights for the trinity of love. God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Gather us in, the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and aching, the young and the old, the stranger and friend. Forgive us and heal us. Strengthen and renew us, for we are one family with Christ Jesus as our head. Next week we celebrate Ascension, but we are moving the feast a little bit closer by celebrating it this Sunday. And so our first song reminds us about Christ's Ascension. Lord, I lift your name on high. So glad you came to 
Gospel reading for this week comes from the end of Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. It's a day of resurrection. And while they were still talking, Jesus himself came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they had seen a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do the doubts rise in your minds? Here, look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is me. Touch me and see that I am not a ghost. Does a ghost have flesh and bones? When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe greatly, it beca because of the joy and amazement, he then asked him, do you have anything to eat? And so they gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you, and everything must be fulfilled in order to fulfill what is written about me in the law of Moses and within the prophets. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, it is written that the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations, beginning from here in Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. I am going, I am going to send you my father, what my father has promised. Until then, stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. There they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple. Praising God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Easter message that we've been exploring over the last few weeks. When it comes to its climax in the great ascension of your son, who came from heaven to earth, and now from earth to heaven he ascends. We give you thanks again this day. Amen. Jesus, in his earthly ministry, in some ways was constrained by his 
physical form, one place at a time. But before he goes, he promises his disciples that he will be with them wherever they go. How would this be achieved? Will it involve the returning of Christ in human flesh to the glory of heaven and the sending of the Holy Spirit? The three in one and the one in three at work. We're preparing for Pentecost and that celebration and remembering of the outpouring of the first Pentecost, but also remembering that that Pentecost continues, for God's Spirit is still with us. And it all needed to take place. The ascension is a pivotal moment where the incarnation the God who became man returns to the throne room of heaven, not just as the king of our hearts, but as the Lord and God of all creation. He came from heaven to earth to show us a way. From the earth to the cross, our debts to pain. From the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky, that one day we too would be with him in heaven. Our next song reminds us of God's great love, of the Easter story, but that forever Jesus is glorified now.
So we can come in prayer to the one who has risen and ascended. Let us pray. Risen and ascended King, we thank you for your great love to us. For the promise that you would not leave us as orphans. But in your ascension, you open the way for the Spirit to come upon us and to be with us. And to remain with us now and always. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence wherever we are this day. And Lord, we're grateful that you know our thoughts and our hearts cry. So we come before you this day. The prayers for the world that you love, for its people, for your children, and for our families and church family. Hear us as we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we continue to pray for our world. We pray for peace to come. We pray for, Lord, a removal of those in power who would seek their own wealth and position, their greed. And, Lord, for all that do not work, for justice and peace. Lord, we pray for a change in governments, in nations where there is conflict, for peace to come. Lord, we continue to pray for the United Nations. We pray that you would make it a strong body, a body that indeed would encourage the working together of all nations. For we are but one planet. Help us to care and to share and to work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for our own nations, for the concerns over prices, over energy and costs of living, for the unrest 
in our employment market as people begin to feel that they are worse off, that they have been in some ways forgotten or neglected. And the only way to make their voice heard is to go on strike. Lord, we pray for wisdom in discussions. We pray for good outcomes. Lord, that the, those in need indeed would be fed and watered. We pray especially, Lord, for those on the poverty line, for those partaking in, in food banks and seeking help. Lord, that help would always be available to them. We pray for the work of our own local storehouse and the Midlovian Food Bank and the Trussell Trust. Lord, that there would be provision for all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for those in need known to us through our church family and own families. We pray especially for Mary Fulmer. Lord, we pray that you would you could give her rest. And Lord, if it's your will, gently guide her from this earth into the glories of heaven. May your peace be upon her. We too pray for Julia Davis as she settles into Archview and for other members of our congregation whom we love but don't see as much. For Kate and Patrick Mark, for Catherine and Les, for Sean, for Dorothy. For Jane. Lord, may your blessing be upon them wherever they are. May your peace be beside them and comfort them this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for those awaiting news of operations or support and help. We pray for family living with relatives with dementia and who in one sense have already lost the person. We just pray for peace and strength and for good and wise decisions about their future care. And Lord, I began by wishing my brother a a happy birthday. I also pray for my sister in need of a, a hip replacement. Lord, that the waiting would not be too long. Lord, for our families, for all whom we love and care for, may they know your peace and blessing this day. And for our church family, as we prepare again to gather on Sunday, May we indeed be a people of praise, encouraged and equipped by your love. For the glory of your name we pray. Amen. After Ascension comes Pentecost. And that question about are we willing to be open to God's Spirit leading us? Our closing song is titled Oceans, referencing being called out onto the water to trust in God, guidance by the Holy Spirit.
again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Our Sunday worship continues this Sunday at 10 o'clock. And if you're in the area, we would love for you to come and join us. And we'd love to see you all. Goodbye and God bless. Go in peace. The love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen.